Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Krista Hartzik. I am the Iowa SARE coordinator. I work at Iowa State University. And today I am excited that we have one of our SARE grant recipients here. Uh, Zach Cassidy is here with SILT, which is the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust. Uh, Zach is responsible for finding prospective landowners in Polk County and surrounding area who wish to leave a legacy of sustainable table food farming to Iowa. Zach, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be uh, talking uh, to y'all today. Um, thank you for attending. And to those that are in person, I congratulate you for being braver than I am. Um, well, as, as Krista said, I am Zach Cassidy. I'm the Central Iowa Land Scout for uh, SILT. Uh, it is, it, I work throughout Central Iowa to seek opportunities uh, for, for easements and other land protection to uh, encourage more sustainable food farming here in Iowa, as well as to lower costs um, related to land access for newer and beginning farmers. Um, today, I'm going to go be going through a little bit about our Iowa Landowner's Guide to Sustainable Food Crops. Um, I suspect some of you all um, <clears throat> have a copy of that uh, in, in your truck or maybe at home somewhere. Uh, we've passed a lot out of those at the events. Um, I'll be referring it to, as, uh, to it as the Landowner's Guide since the whole title is a little bit of a mouthful, but um, I'll be going through a little bit about what SILT is and what we do, as well as um, the history and a little bit about the the guide as well um, and how we how we got there. So uh, just to start, um, so what is SILT? Uh, SILT is the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust. Um, so we were formed in in 2017 by a, a group of Iowans who were concerned about the future and, and current state of our farms here in Iowa, and it wanted to see more uh, table food production, more sustainable agriculture, and who were also concerned about uh, land access opportunities for, for new and beginning farmers. Um, so yeah, we were formed to protect opportunities for sustainable agriculture and to, to fight farmland loss that has been happening um, at, an, at an alarming rate here in, this, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the state of Iowa. Uh, so to the right here, you can see um, the, this is uh, Whitney and Jordan Klassen. Uh, they purchased uh, land from Silt um, <clears throat> about four years ago that came out as significant discount to their family. So they were able to buy about 25 acres um, uh, from us that uh, they otherwise might not have been able to afford. Um, and this is some pictures of uh, Great A Gardens, which is um, the, the name of their farm. Um, this was donated by T.C. Winchell, um, after buying 25 acres in Earlham. Uh, his late wife had asked that the land remain in agriculture, so he donated his land to Silt, um, and this allowed the Classens to purchase the land from Silt, um, at a, a, like I said, at a significant, uh, reduction, which, uh, allowed them to fill their, to, to meet their dream of, of becoming farmers. Um, so just briefly, I want to go through a little bit of history of the last two farm crises in this country and, and why, um, why silt became important in, in, uh, in light of those, as well as, uh, the, uh, the, the guide. Um, <clears throat> so during World War I, agricultural production slumped in Europe due to the uh, fighting uh, in, in there. Um, this meant that the prices of American grain and other products uh, rose dramatically. As these uh, prices rose, farmers borrowed money to buy more acreage and, and additional ma machinery uh, with mortgages doubling between 1910 and 1920. Uh, but as the war ended and European markets recovered, uh, these prices dropped and farmers who had taken on debt uh, could not make payments. Um, and then in 1929, with the stark market, market crash, uh, banks suddenly wanted their money back, which uh, forced many farms to foreclose. Um, in the Southwest, there was also the Dust Bowl, which was a result of over farming. As you can see here, you can uh, 
to the right, uh, there's a picture of uh, uh, a farm uh, being impacted by the Dust Bowl. Uh, my grandmother was one. Her family had a farm in West Texas, and they had to flee to California, um, and they were called uh, Okies. Uh, I mentioned these events be, uh, because this, these were uh, events where in the, in the mind of the founders of Silt who were worried about another crisis due to the rising cost of farmland in Iowa. Then in the 1980s, uh, policies from the Federal Reserve, as well as record uh, production of agriculture, um, caused uh, farmland value to drop about 60%. Um, this combined with an export decline caused farm debt to soar, uh, leading to more far, uh, uh, farm foreclosures, uh, impacting uh, millions of farmers in rural communities. Um, okay, so just a little bit more about the problem um, that that Silt uh, tries to solve, uh, the problem being threefold. Uh, so prohibitive cost of farmland for new and beginning farmers uh, with uh, farmland rising uh, significantly, um, as you can see at this chart below, uh, starting around 2010, 2013, uh, you see a dramatic rise in in farmland values, and that 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 price is going up uh, dramatically. Um, further, uh, more uh, ninety percent of Iowa's table food that is food that is eaten by people. Uh, and that that doesn't go into ethanol or cattle feed. Uh, Ninety percent of that is is uh, imported, and the farmers, the uh, founders of Silt, were very concerned about that. Uh, given how much food is grown here, there's no reason we can't be growing more food for Iowans. And then, of course, there's the pollution from conventional ag agriculture into our soil on our streams. That uh, is part of the reason that cancer rates, for example, are higher. And so um, the, the founders of Silt just uh, needed, realized they needed a change. And they were also uh, remembering the crisis of the 80s and how that really um, negatively impacted so many farmers in Iowa, as well as entire communities who depended on agriculture. Um, so the solution, um, so as I said, Silt was formed out of concern for the sustainability of our food systems and the a uh, lack of ants access for new farmers. Um, and they our founders wanted to encourage more sustainable farming, um, not just in terms of in the environment, but in terms of economic security for farmers and our communities. If farmers are less dependent on a single crop, uh, they are more protected against um, lower rates for that crop. Um, our leases generally come about 40% less than they would otherwise, um, including no more money down and tenants can build equity in the farm, meaning if they put money into improvements, they will be paid back if and when they leave. We also do 20 year leases that can um, be renewed again and again. In fact, they can actually be inherited by children. Um, and then oh, we also work to diversify farming uh, uh, <clears throat> by encouraging table food farming and encouraging more diversified farming. Uh, to Below, you can see a picture of one of our farms. This is Red Fern Farm. Um, that is a uh, the beginnings of a chestnut and uh, pawpaw uh, plantation. Um, so you can see this is our protected land that we have uh, right now. Um, we're looking at... Uh, <clears throat> Adding to that in the next uh, th this year, so we're we're looking at adding more farms this year. Um, that's my job. And then, so a little bit uh, just about the the grant. So it was the SAIR grant, as you all are familiar with, the North Central Region Sustainable Research and Education Program. Uh, the the funds are intended for professional development practices to professionals in agriculture and agricultural education for both nonprofit and profit uh, operations. Um, we requested uh, just over $35,000, uh, which we received most of, um, with the purpose to create an easy to read guidebook for Iowa lander, landowners who are seeking to 
uh, increase crop diversity. So just really as a, as a starting off point to start to think about what else they could do with their land. Um, so the project ob objectives uh, were to collect information from experienced growers and organizations uh, in, in Iowa and surrounding states, uh, including capturing wisdom from many experienced uh, growers. Uh, this includes uh, Tom Wall and Kathy Dice from Redfern Farms. I showed you a picture of their farm a couple slides ago. Um, we also received input from Women Food and Agricultural Network. Practical Farmers of Iowa, Iowa Organic, uh, publications from the University of Illinois, uh, Missouri Agroforestry, Iowa State, and some others. Uh, so the uh, we aggregated this information into an easy to read guidebook for land Iowa landowners. We pr printed an initial 500 uh, copies as well as a web-based guide, which is uh, available for free on our website as is the guide. Um, and it gets a lot of interest at our conventions and events for people to just use as a guideline and a, and a jumping off point to, to think about what else they could do with their farmland. Um, we promoted the guidebook through our social media, uh, radio, and conferences throughout the state. And then as part of the grant, uh, we also hosted several food days where we distributed, uh, sorry, <laughs> demonstrated uh, food farming uh, systems through three or four uh, field days to promote um, diversified agriculture. So uh, just a little bit about uh, our contributors. So Joe Klingelhutz, who was uh, the land scout at the time, um, he compiled all the information from the various uh, experts and landowners, talked to farmers in Iowa as well as in Minnesota about the book to pick their brains about types of crops that are grown, uh, that are good to grow in Iowa, um, and interviewed a lot of, of farmers, including uh, many of the farmers who were early supporters of this book. So he, he, um, he still, Joe still works for Silt uh, as a, on a contractual basis where he, he uh, advises on potential Silt sites. Um, so then we also received, and I apologize, I wasn't able to find a picture, but Kim Alexander of Alexander Farms provided uh, guidance on li livestock. Uh, she has a family farm in Ottawa. Uh, and then uh, Denise O'Brien, who was also an early supporter of the book uh, of Rolling Acres Farms, as well as uh, she at the time, she was associated with Women, uh, Food and Ag. Uh, she provided advice on livestock as well as niche crops. Uh, her family farm is in Atlantic. Uh, Tom Wall and Kathy uh, Dice of Red Firm Farms, um, whom I mentioned uh, already, uh, gave advice on new nuts and fruits. Um, the uh, Tom Wall and Kathy Dice own a silk protected farm in Wapello. Uh, they are they have eighty six acres of perennial agriculture. They're very, very good fruit and nut farmers, um, and they they have uh, been a great source of information for other farmers and, and for uh, food networks generally in Iowa. So I just want to give them a shout out. Um, some of our other contributors, uh, Patrick O'Malley of Iowa State provided some information on commercial foods, fruits and vegetables. Uh, David Cag Cavagnaro uh, of the Pepperfield Project now rerouted connections. They had a name change. Uh, he's a uh, um, agricultural photographer, and he provided uh, the photos uh, that went into the book. And then Katie Adams of the Savannah Institute um, provided information on perennial crops, including berries. <clears throat> so just a little bit more, uh, just a little bit about what the what's in the book itself. Uh, the book is designed to present uh, a lot of options uh, for farmers to determine uh, the best value added products for their land and whether it be fruits, nuts, vegetables, livestock or niche crops, niche crops such as mushrooms or maple. It also includes common threats and tips for best management. Um, so as you can see, it, it has common threats, best management practices. It also includes common capital expenses and common labor expenses so people can uh, make some informed decisions about what they can afford to to grow and get started with. 
Um, it also includes some uh, stories from Iowa landowners. Um, so to the left are Mary and Vern Zar Zaradnik. I apologize for butchering their last name. Um, they purchased their farm in 1996, and they uh, they share their story in the book about using their hog farm to fund new crops uh, like an orchard, uh, some vegetables and grapes that gave them more freedom uh, as farmers as the feed prices for their hogs uh, went up. So they were able to pivot and do some some uh, uh, more creative things. Um, <clears throat> This is, uh, then this is, uh, to the right is Denise O'Brien, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, she shared the story of how her husband, Larry, and her started farming 44 years ago on his family farm. Uh, she she talks about how she was a town girl without an idea about what a farm would look like, but they were inspired, inspired by uh, the Rodale Cornucopia project towards uh, local food production. Um, and being inspired by that, they planted berries, asparagus, in an orchard. And they spoke of the struggle that they had in changing their operation from conventional row cropping, but they were able to make it successful. Um, and then the book also provides uh, some technical information. Um, so, for example, here you can see uh, chestnuts. It has a little bit about uh, potential markets for chestnuts. So, um, Many of the, you know, for example, many of the immigrant communities value chestnuts, so that's a potential market for your chestnuts, and or you can sell them wholesale, um, as well. But uh, you know, it, it mentions that local markets are not uh, are not the best, but if sold broadly, broadly they can compete with national and global markets. Um, as you can see, it uh, it has some considerations. So uh, chestnuts, weevils, gal wasps. Deer, uh, deer when when they are young, and as well as uh, mowing, uh, being something that you have to do uh, when it's growing, and then it also ranks the initial costs as a three, so that's in the middle. Labor capital being the uh, the biggest uh, uh, capital input, and then it also has uh, some uh, information on other resources. So uh, the Center for Agroforestry at, at Missouri would be uh, a good resource for somebody who's interested in learning more about growing uh, chestnuts. Um, well, thank you for uh, listening to me today. Uh, I was very honored when I was asked to uh, speak. If anybody would like to uh, follow up with me and ha uh, would like to talk to me about their land, if they're interested in a silt easement or in um, or in any, any, any other um, information about silt that I can provide. Uh, here is my email at the bottom. Uh, you can also uh, find the guidebook on our website if you just go to silt.org. Um, and thank you for listening to me. Um, I think we have plenty of time for uh, questions if anybody has any. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate that. I, I am not seeing any questions at all in the room. So you might have okay. gotten off extra easy today. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, I think, the, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, if anybody who's uh, listening to the recording has questions, uh, please feel free to email me. I appreciate I'll do the it. Best I can to, to uh, answer your questions or direct them to somebody who knows better than I do. That would be great. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate you getting on and, and making the flexibility work.